What's up guys, Jason here from Thinline Defense. One of the questions we've had as a team and one that we see from viewers is the capability of level 3A body armor plates. Today we have a couple budget options from Battlesteel and Tacticon Armament. And finally, I get to shoot something. Let's check it out. With all the hype on level four plates and how light can you get them and level three special purpose plates, I feel like the community has kind of missed a glaring stat. Almost 60% of firearm murders committed in the US are from handguns. Now, this is based on data from the FBI in 2020, I believe. In the same data, only 3% of firearm murders come from rifles. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have proper protection from those threats, and those level four plates and level three plus plates will definitely stop handgun rounds. But if you could have a way to protect your vital organs from the most common threat out there for under a pound, would you do it? Now, rifle rated plates are awesome in terms of ballistic protection, but they may not be the best thing to have on you when weight and concealability is more of a concern for you. With items like the reduced visibility plate carrier or RVPC coming out from defense mechanisms or the countless other concealable plate carriers on the market, this is something as a community I feel like we should consider. So today we're going to put these plates through their paces with some firearms that I have on hand. First, we'll see how they do with the Ruger SR-22. Should be no surprises here. Next, we'll step it up to a Smith & Wesson 442 chambered in 38 Special. After that, we'll see what the IWI Masada Slim in 9mm can do to these plates. We'll then step it up to a Glock 23, which is chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. After that, we'll see how a Glock 21 chambered in 45 ACP does. Finally, we'll do some double op buck from my Remington 870. Now, according to NIJ standards, these plates should stop all of those threats. But I have one last trick up my sleeve. If we still haven't penetrated these plates, let's see how they hold up to the PSA Rock 5.7. I got some different types of ammo we could try out too. Now, NIJ standards for level 3A don't include 5.7 as a round that they could stop, but we're gonna have some fun anyways. All right. Let's head out to the range and see how these things do. All right, Ruger SR-22. So, there's entry right there. And a little bit of delamination, or not delamination, but a little bit of bubble on the back. You guys seeing that? There it is, right there. All right, next is the Smith & Wesson Airweight 442 38 Special. I forgot to say, this is the battle steel plate. So, Tacticon, Tacticon Armament will do next. 38 Special, battle steel plate. Ooh. So, so it came in right at the top of the edge, delaminated it. I mean, just ripped it apart. So, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try that again. We'll aim a little bit lower to see how well it does. But uh, yeah, and then we'll have some fun with this plate. Okay, 38 special, we're gonna try that again. A little bit lower this time. All right, dead center. So a big cave-in right here. And you still have, you know, it caught it. You'd be alive, be hurting. Okay, so this is the IWI Masada Slim 9mm. Ooh, yeah. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so impacted here. It captured it. Again, you got a good deformation on the back, kind of split the side, but the bullet's captured, no penetration so far. Uh, we got 40 Smith & Wesson next. All right, Glock 23, chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. This plate is not having a good day. Oof. Let's check that one out. All right, this is an interesting one. 
So probably because the plate's just been shot so many times, but there's the entry right there. And you kind of see, um, it came in and went through several layers, but then you kind of see where it came out the side. So it didn't penetrate really, but it did fly out the side. Yeah, I think this plate has seen better days. I'm gonna straighten it up. There we go, good as new. All right, still no penetration through the actual plate, but the delamination is definitely an issue that I'm seeing. We still have a uh, 45 and 12 gauge buck. There's no way this thing's gonna last. All right, so Glock 21 chambered in 45 ACP. Ooh, this poor plate. Uh, I think that was too low. We'll check. Oh, no, get a look at this. This is kind of cool. There's a the bullet right there. So it stopped it. All right, uh, 12 gauge buck. Oof. All right. 12 gauge buck. This poor plate. Ready to go. Ooh. Sent that poor guy flying. All right. So, still no penetration. Yeah. I got one more trick up my sleeve. The thing I think, fairly confident, will get through that. PSA. Rock 5.7. Oh yeah. Let's check it out. So I still, I think it, I think it captured it. That is very surprising to me. You can see the hole right here, dead center. Uh, try it one more time. All right, round two, battle steel plate still. Wow. So you still got a big bulge, but surprisingly still no penetration. And this thing is riddled. I know. Some of the lead fragments, but the five, seven rounds, there's a piece of it right there. I mean, I see where it, it went in. It is just, I'm really surprised that with all of that, it still stopped the five, seven. Very surprising to me. to mess with it but you kind of see the dark spot where it caught a lot of that stuff you see the fragments of the metal and you still see some copper in those underlayments there it is right there look at that so surprise the delamination you know the edge of it yeah not something good but let's try the tacticon armament next all right, we're gonna go through this again. So we have the Tacticon armament plate that's up now. And again, starting off with the Ruger SR-22. Oh, that seemed a little low. I'm gonna go one more. Good measure. Okay. So the first one, you'll see it on the GoPro footage. It hit low. Uh, but it looked like it hit the dirt first, so I fired a second round, smack dab in the middle. You can see, In person, you can see it. It's probably going to be hard to pick up on camera. And there's a slight deformation in the back, I and mean, it caught it just fine. I will say that uh, this feels a lot sturdier than the battle steel, uh, but let's run it through its paces. We got 38 Special next. All right. Well, popped it out of its stand. 
All right, so hit just to the right, as right, so you're looking at it, just to the left of the 22, and you can feel where it kind of, the, the surface delaminated. You do have a big bulge on the back. Not sure if that's gonna pick up, but there is a big bulge here, uh, but still no penetration. No delamination that I'm seeing along the sides. Let's do um, nine mil from the IWI Masada next. All right, so nine mil IWI Masada Slim, Tacticon Armament. Bingo. All right, so again, we're kind of in the same ballpark, so right of center, um, a good deformation on the back, and it caused some of the paper to rip, but no penetration still. We finally did get some delamination though along the edge, uh, but that's pretty minor compared to what we saw with the battle steel. So what we got next? Uh, Glock 23. Let's check it out. All right, Glock 23. Tacticon armament. Ooh, sent it flying. All right, it's that hole coming up on camera. It's uh, it's much bigger than any of the other ones. So, 22, nine mil. Excuse me, 38 special, nine mil. There's the 40. A lot of delamination along the edge now. We already had that down here, but now this whole side is delaminated. A huge deformation on the back, but still no penetration. Got 45 next. So 45, Glock 21, Tacticon Armament. <clears throat> I see uh, where it entered. Let's take a look. Ooh, very interesting. So you see entry point here and you have a deformation and you have a crack in the back coating. You got a crack in the back coating. Um, I wouldn't say that that's penetration. It doesn't look like it penetrated. It looks like it captured all the shards. Um, next is 12 gauge. All right. Hopefully I don't hit my camera. Here we go. 12 gauge Tacticon armament. Oh, that went a flying. Golly, I'm gonna take you with me, buddy. Let's go check this out. Okay, no penetration. You could hear him rattling around in there. All right, well, let's try the uh, PSA 5.7, see if we get penetration on this thing. All right, PSA Rock 5.7. Let's give it a whirl. Oof, I keep thinking the speed of this thing, it's gonna penetrate, it's gotta penetrate it. Nope, still nothing. So, still dead center. Um, Kind of surprised. I mean, you have the crack from the 45 ACP, but besides that, there's nowhere else that this thing is penetrated. It's still hard as heck to get this outside cover off. Yeah. All right. So kind of final thoughts. Um, you know, we talked about the threats that you're going to be facing. The most common threat that the FBI talks about is threats from a handgun. And Granted, I didn't have every handgun out here. I didn't have every type of ammo. I did alternate between hollow points and FMJs. I think both of these for the price that you're gonna be paying would be a steal to get. So battle steel definitely feels cheaper, but I will say the there's zero penetration along the back. It definitely delaminated faster than the Tacticon armament. Tacticon armament feels more robust. It has more of a multi-curve. It's a little bit bigger. So if you kind of see it standing up at the back, you got maybe an inch on the battle steel. Um, but you did have that cracking of the coating on the back. No real penetration. I'd say you'd be, you'd be good to get either of these. If you're going to be building a low visibility or a reduced visibility plate carrier, instead of going with level four 
inch and a half thick plates that weigh eight pounds each. Why not go with one of these that weigh a pound, if that, and you could stop a vast majority of the threats that you're gonna face. So a couple things that I wanted to, to touch on. One, I didn't realize until I got back that it was not buckshot that I had, it was birdshot, so apologies for that. Still, I, I don't think that would have made that much of a difference. With this, these plates, and I had them on display right, right behind me now, being able to stop 5.7 FMJ, 5.7 the VMAX, um, I think that this would have been no problem for the, the buckshot. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a fun one for me. And I wanna say thanks to our Patreons and our YouTube members. You guys make it possible for us to get all this cool stuff. And man, we're super grateful for the support you've shown us for going on years now. And thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about level 3A plates and if you'd use them in, in your kits. All right, guys, I'm out. <laughs> that one gets the best distance. <laughs> yeah.